All right. This case so for this so one, low power with a CIS yeah, structure. Good. That seems not true. Epithelial lying of the cis wall. So I I always confuse. Is it a synovial cyst or ganglion cyst? Some kind of like this. The reason you confuse it is because to me those are like the they are on a spectrum with one another. They're they are cystic out pockets, uh, out pouchings of the synovial space that get filled with synovial fluid and may have a, a partial or complete so synovial lining or may have no lining at all. It just depends on the case. So so to me the ganglion cyst, synovial cyst. Uh, Baker cyst, which is like a large ganglion cyst from behind the knee. Uh, I think there's another name on the finger, retinacular cyst. Um, and there are a few other orthopedic uh, related names. They all are to me the same spectrum of process. They are a dense fibrotic cyst wall and then blue mucin mixoid material, which is actually just synovial fluid, but it looks just like mucin. And plus minus a lining of synovium. You don't have to have a synovial lining. I would say most ganglion cysts I see have very little, if any, synovium there, like actual synovia sites. They just have this dense, compressed kind of sclerotic collagen. And um, and even though there's no lining, I don't know how to explain it, but you can tell that, this, to me, I, it looks so like perfectly flat that even without the mucin there, say we took the mucin away and you just had this piece, I would argue this is the edge of a pseudocyst. And I, I don't know how to exactly explain that, but hopefully that makes sense to you that it looks like too perfectly flattened along the edge to just have been torn away during surgery or to be an artifactual space. Like that something was there in the patient's body that compressed this collagen and made this kind of pseudocystic fibrotic lining. So the reason I bring that up is when it's, when it's a perfect cyst like this, no problem, right? But a lot of times we don't get it, all the contents wash out. We get a fragment or just the edge of this. So that being able to see dense fibrosis and a, and a sharp lined edge to it with, with no lining cells is useful because it tells me we're either at the edge of a cystic thing like a, a synovial or ganglion cyst, or maybe we're at the edge of a pseudocystic capsule around a foreign body and the foreign body has fallen out or they plucked it out intraoperatively and we, we weren't told that and we just got the lining around it or it's a capsule around a breast implant. Usually that gets a lot of synovial metaplasia. So I think it's a, this is a very boring kind of specimen, right? But that, that ability to tell that this is the edge of a pseudocyst, I think is a really a helpful and kind of hard to explain uh, practice. So I don't know if I'm, if I'm helping you at all, but I hope that that makes sense a little bit. So when you're lucky though, you'll get the whole thing here and you'll get the mixoid stuff inside it. You may get some scattered little histiocytes that are kind of like mucy phages that are eating up some of the, the, you know, the synovial fluid in there. You sometimes get fibrin, sometimes a bunch of fibrin deposition and hemosiderin and blood and hemorrhage. When you get like trauma, people sometimes try to crush their ganglion cyst with a, with a large book. Like in the past, people um, have, have referred to these as Bible cysts because, you know, sometimes people would have large like family Bibles in the days before there were online ones. And they would then use that biggest book in the house to try to crush the ganglion cyst. Uh, if you're a patient watching this, I am not advocating for that. Although it will sometimes make the cyst rupture and go away, the cyst may refill and it also may cause other trauma to the local tissue. So, so most authorities don't recommend that, although I have heard that it can actually work. But um, in any case, just so you know, that sometimes you'll hear people talk about that colloquially. Colloquially, but the, you can also have other reasons for hemorrhage and trauma in these. And and when you get a lot of hemorrhage and trauma, the a ganglion cyst will look quite different, and it will get a lot of reactive change, granulation tissue, and reactive change around it. Sometimes mixed inflammation, a bunch of fibrin, and it can begin to look like a chronic bursitis. So to me, also a bursa sac will look. I, I can look identical to a ganglion cyst. It really just depends on the clinical and intraoperative findings. Um, and so if I'm not sure, I'll say there's dense fibrosis or dense fibrous tissue and, and focal uh, synovium. And this could be a ganglion cyst or it could be a portion of bursa. It just depends on the intraoperative findings. And, uh, and so there you go. But just so you know that there can be a lot of reactive change in ganglion cysts and in bursa sometimes, okay? Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is that sometimes the mucin, like I said, the synovial fluid can wash out during processing and be completely empty and clear, okay? 
And the, uh, the other thing is that sometimes it tends to leak out of the cyst and kind of infiltrate the adjacent tissue. And what that does is give you little pockets of loose kind of edematous or myxoid area, often with little foamy, bubbly, mucophage type histiocytes. Sometimes that can be so abundant that it kind of resembles the changes you see in a myxoma. So sometimes if I just see fibrous tissue with with myxoma looking change with no cystic area, no pseudocyst, no, no synovium, I'll still say these changes could represent changes adjacent to a joint or a bursa or bursitis, or they could be changes adjacent to a ganglion cyst. And you can see this same spectrum of changes we've talked about here. You can see those in uh, um, uh, cute, uh, digital mucus cyst or digital myxoid cyst, which I think of as kind of a cutaneous uh, manifestation that is very similar to ganglion cyst, but it is on the, the, the uh, skin right near the proximal, in the proximal nail fold, right? Just below the, uh, at the, at the start of the, the base of the nail, the fingernail or the toenail. So, uh, the reason I belabor all this is because all of these things can be applied across bursas, uh, synovial and ganglion cyst, digital mucus cyst can all have this, uh, these same spectrum of changes. Okay. So I think we've made a boring thing as exciting as I possibly can. Uh, I did not really point out the synovium itself. I guess I can do that. We don't really have very good synovial cells, actually. Right here, this is kind of synovium. They look kind of like histiocytes that are layered on the edge of this space. Sometimes they're a single layer, sometimes they're several layers thick. They, they look almost like an epithelium, except they're like not tight enough. They're not perfect enough, right? An epithelium should be like continuous, you know, and should be like nice and tightly connected together because epithelial cells have tight junctions. That's their job, right? To make a waterproof barrier. And, um, and synovial cells look kind of, I always kind of jokingly say, they look like if histiocytes got together and made a, a half-hearted attempt to try to make a, an epithelial lining, that's what synovium looks like to me. Because I don't really know, it looks kind of like epithelium, but less continuous, less perfect. Uh, more feathery and loose and falling apart. So I don't know if that works for you, but I've struggled to explain what, what synovium looks like and how to recognize it because it can be like really subtle and thin or it can be really thick like in reactive, you know, joint situations like in arthritis. So it just depends. So I don't know if that works for you, but that's kind of how I describe synovium. So there we go, like 15 minutes about ganglion cyst. If you're still watching, you should, you get an A plus from me.